Imagine if you could be totally at ease on camera, poised and deliver your message with confidence, but right now you turn into a puddle of sweat as soon as the video camera is aimed in your direction. Today I have 12 tips that you can put into action right away to go from a hot mess to confident. Hi there everyone, I'm Amy Thomas from The Video Lady and today I'm going to give you 12 tips that you can put into action right away to become more confident on camera. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell for the alert notification. That way when I create new videos, no matter where they're posted, you'll get notified. Let's talk about being more confident on camera. We are gonna start with a really simple tip today. Are you ready? Okay, my first tip is to smile. And I want you to go ahead and smile right now and then send me a thumbs up in the comments below to let me know that you did it. Some studies show that smiling naturally lifts your mood and it makes you happier and more confident. So just by going through this exercise, you're already gonna be more confident. Isn't that great? The rest of this training is going to be easier too, right? Step number two, practice. Yep, you heard that right. Practicing and watching yourself on camera is the only way that you're going to get any better. I know that seems like everybody wants to just wake up one morning and be brilliant on camera, but it doesn't really work that way. I'm sorry to tell you. But here's what I did when I was starting out. I'd record myself practicing a part of my video speech or just sometimes it was just a quote. Uh, anything I was thinking about for 40 seconds to a minute and then I would go back, analyze my mistakes and do it again. And I did that three to four times every day for a few weeks until I started to feel more comfortable get a tripod. When you have to focus on more than one thing, such as keeping your camera stable, you're going to come across as distracted. Tripods are really cheap and they are a very worthwhile investment to make for this business. If you can't afford a tripod, then use a box or some books or whatever you have to do, but keep that camera stable without having to hold it yourself. This is going to give you some headspace to focus on your message. Which brings me to step number four. Step number four is to focus on your message so that you can sound confident. A lot of people who are on camera don't sound confident because they're still focused on how they look and how they sound rather than what they're trying to say. If you don't believe in what you're saying, nobody else is going to believe it either. When I first started, I couldn't stop being distracted by the fact that I act exactly like my sister on camera. But when I did my practice videos, I could literally see when I became distracted by that. So once I was able to identify that, process it, and then just accept that, yep, I'm like my sister, this is me, and then my videos got better. Step number five, look directly into the camera lens. This is going to help to make you a lot less nervous. Don't watch your performance live. If you have a tripod, turn your screen around so that you can't see yourself and watch the camera. Your audience is in that little tiny camera lens and they need to hear what you have to say. If it helps, put a picture of your target audience right above or right next to that lens. Step number six, be relatable. The easiest way to be relatable on camera is to be yourself as if you were talking to a close friend. A lot of people come across as condescending in their message because they don't practice this technique and they go up on the ends and they kind of affect this little accent or something um, but that doesn't really come across to their viewers. You might have a really great message to share and you might have help to give but people are going to be put off by somebody who seems aloof. And if you're an introvert like me, studies show that we are much more likely to seem standoffish. So keep that in mind and make the extra effort to be relatable. Okay. Let's just stop here for a second. I wanna make sure that these tips are helpful for you. Take a second to comment below on what tip was the most useful for you so far. And then we're gonna head over to step seven. Step seven is be prepared. Now, remember how I mentioned earlier that you need to practice getting used to yourself on camera? Well, the same is true of your message. 
I've coached kids drama clubs on and off for a number of years and the number one thing I always tell them is to memorize their lines before we ever get on a stage. Why? Because that act of memorization might start out really rote and routine as they memorize and say their lines over and over again, but as you do it, it creates muscle memory that's going to help you be able to say that exact same thing again when you get into a stress situation. For example, in front of a camera. So I know what your next question is going to be. Amy, are you saying I need to memorize all my on-camera speeches? No, that's not what I'm saying. But here's the thing. You need to internalize your message. So I'm an introvert and I don't really do well in situations where I don't know exactly what I'm going to say before I say it. Other people are fantastic at off-the-cuff speeches. That's not really what's important here. What's important is that you've thought through your message and you know exactly what you want to convey. If you tend to ramble or use a lot of ums or you go off on side tangents, those things are over time going to make your message really hard to watch. For me, internalizing a message means I literally write out every single thing I want to say, just how I would say it, and then I get on camera and I wing it. But for others, a bullet pointed list is all they need. So the bottom line here is that you need to be prepared before you hit the record button so that you're putting your best foot forward. Now I've talked a lot about message, so let's just go back to environment for a few more things. What kind of a background should my videos have? When we talk about backdrops or studio setups, generally speaking, less is more. A really highly cluttered background is going to distract your viewers from your message. So when you're just getting started with video, there's no need to spend a bunch of money. Find a space in your home that has a well-lit blank wall. We're using an example here um, and it's starting to get dark, so I probably need to add more light. But normally you can use that as a backdrop, very simple. Um, another really cheap option if you're short on space is to get a room divider on OfferUp or something like that. A lot of those are being practically given away and it's a great way to create something distinctive behind you that doesn't take up a bunch of room in your home. So of course, if you have the room or the money, the ideal option is to have a studio set up. But again, that can be very simple, such as my really brilliant studio with the bookshelf on top of the table on top of the situation that I have pictured here. Okay, step nine. While we're talking about studios and backdrops, it's really important to bring up lighting. Now, what does this have to do with appearing confident on camera? Well, have you ever seen the movie with the heroine locked in the closet in the scary basement while she's being chased by the serial killer? Notice that the lighting is always shot in a low light environment. Oftentimes they're in a confined space. This is intentional on the part of the director to make you feel the same fear and insecurity that your character is feeling. Now, what does this have to do with your videos? Well, when you film your footage in a small room with low light, you are subconsciously projecting the same kind of an image onto your watchers. Minus the scary music, of course. On the flip side though, think about how filmmakers portray happy places like relaxing on the beach. All of those places are filmed with bright lights, vibrant colors. So you don't have to necessarily spend a bunch of money to get this effect. A couple of shop lights from Home Depot or there's some really cheap lighting kits that you can get on Amazon. They can help really create the basics for you. Um, a selfie light is also another simple option that will take things up a notch. If you change the game and add better lighting to your filming, it's going to automatically add a level of confidence and professionalism to your video footage just right off the bat. Step number 10, sound. If you are filming with your phone, the built-in microphone has its limitations. I always recommend that you upgrade to a wireless lapel mic or a good studio boom mic as soon as you're able to. However, when you're first starting out, it might not be in your budget. So here's a few things you can do in the meantime to make sure your sound is as good as possible. First of all, film indoors. If you film outside, you're almost always going to pick up a lot of ambient wind noise and that's gonna be irritating for your viewers and it's almost impossible to get rid of. If you film in a quiet place, that's gonna go much better as well. My husband is now just coming out of our squeaky door. Sorry about that. Think about things like refrigerators or the TV running in the background. Those are the kind of things are gonna be really hard to tune out. So avoiding these kind of places is going to improve your sound. The only other thing I wanna say about sound 
is that you want to make sure to speak clearly. Don't mumble. There is just nothing more frustrating than not being able to understand what's being said. Step 11, personal appearance. So personal appearance is a very individual thing, but there's a couple key points that I want to make clear. First of all, it's very hard to appear confident if you are feeling self-conscious about yourself. So before I get into the specifics of things you can do to help project confidence in your personal appearance, I just want to remind you that when you are on camera, this is not about you. It's not about the fact that the camera adds 10 pounds or that you're short or that you're painfully shy. It's about your message. Focus on your message and your personal appearance is going to be a whole lot easier to manage. Second, there's a number of specific steps that you can take that will help you project confidence to your viewers. One of those is to wear clothing that you feel comfortable in that still projects the image that you're trying to send out to the people who are watching. So for example, if your clients are Fortune 500 executives, it's probably not appropriate to wear your pajamas. You do want to wear a little bit of makeup, especially some no shine powder foundation to lessen the shine on your skin that can come from the extra lighting that you are normally going to put into your studio area. And then finally, just like your mama told you, stand up straight or sit up straight and don't forget to smile. Step 12, play to your strengths. So we talked earlier about how being approachable is key to building an audience, but approachable doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. For example, I have no kids, so I really can't resonate with the busy mom harassed to success story that some people send out. I'm looking for somebody who has a little bit more calm in their environment. However, if you are a busy mom and that's your target audience, your audience might really benefit from seeing you in busy mom real life mode. The key here is not to try for some unrealistic picture of perfection. The key is to be authentic and passionate. Your message is unique to you. You have strengths that are unique to you. Use those strengths to get your message out and don't worry about all the people in the world who seem to have it all together more than you. They don't. Here's another example. I'm giving you tips in this video, but if some of them don't work for you, well then find something else that does work for you. Your message is what's important, and as soon as you relax and accept this, you're gonna find your tribe of people who's attracted to your message. So that's it for today, friends. 12 tips for being more confident on camera. If you need more help with improving your confidence on camera, make sure you sign up for my Facebook group on my website at www.thevideolady.expert. You'll find the link in the description below. You can also subscribe to my video channel here. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, tell other people about it. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time.